Uh, our next speaker is uh, Maria Keffler, who has been an activist uh, and uh, educator on the subject of transgender activism, and, uh, and is the author of um, author of something. Well, I'll let her tell you about herself, and it's in the program. Sorry, go ahead, Maria. That's quite all right. That's quite all right. Thank you. Um, this. Uh, presentation usually takes me about 20 minutes and I've got 50, I've got 14 52 51 so I'm gonna go fairly quickly and I slid in a couple of extra slides but I'm preaching to the choir a lot of the things I'm gonna tell you today you already know um, and I want to also put a plug in for for Mary's school guide I looked through it yesterday it's excellent it's outstanding everyone needs to pick one up before you leave today we all know the schools are, are indoctrinating our kids. Um, the transgender agenda is in our schools and, and it's, um, it's coming for our kids. Um, I'm not just gonna speak about school today, but also about entertainment, about social media. Our kids are being assaulted from every single corner of the culture. And I trained as a public school teacher. I was licensed as a secondary English teacher. I've always been a proponent of the public schools. I sent my kids to a Title I school. I felt like you send your kids to school where you live. You neighbor with your neighbors. Uh, two years ago, I pulled all my kids, and I'm homeschooling them now. I tell everyone I know that public school is no longer a safe place for children in this country, and I'm not sure private school is either in many cases. Uh, it's really a horrific situation that we're in. I'm from Virginia. Um, a few, uh, this was in 2018, David Aponte, who's the co-chair of GLSEN, the Gay Lesbian Straight Education Network, was quoted in the Washington Post as saying that Northern Virginia and California has served as laboratories for policies around LGBT issues. What does that mean, that we're laboratories? Our kids are lab rats. Our kids are their experimentation. Uh, I took the next few slides off of a, a website called genderspectrum.org. I'm glad I screenshot them because they're no longer there. They're now behind, I believe, a membership wall, so you cannot see them anymore. But this was the strategy for getting these issues, getting these policies into schools. They had four entry points, internal, interpersonal, instructional, and uh, institutional. Entry points, by the way, are what thieves use to break into your home. Uh, the internal entry point is changing the way people think. We've got to do things that change the way people think about transgender, gay, lesbian issues. Again, I'm going to go through these fairly quickly, but these will all be available to everyone later if you're not able to, uh, to read the whole thing. Internal is about how we think. Interpersonal is how we talk. How do we talk about these things to other people? Some of the language capture that other people have talked about. You can no longer say opposite sex. You now have to say different sex. Um, all of that language capture has been about changing the way we are allowed to talk about this stuff. Instructional, getting it into every single class. People ask me, oh, Maria, how can they put transgender stuff into math class? Oh, Jimmy was Janie until four months ago, and Sarah uh, is going to become Bobby in three months. What's the difference in the number of months? Story problems, they put it all into story problems. They put it on the walls. I walked my kids' high school before I pulled them all. No other organization has as much real estate in the school than the LGBTQ issues do. Every hallway has a pride poster. The school plays are about Harvey Milk. They're about gay students. Um, I'm short on time, so I'm not gonna belabor that. Institutional entry points are the fourth entry point, and we're, we're seeing that now. We're seeing that with the legal statutes, with um, HR 5, the so-called Equality Act. Make it impossible for people to not come alongside, align with these things. Uh, these are some quotes, and um, Mary mentioned one. Uh, Parental rights end when children are enrolled in public school. That was a fifth grade teacher that was quoted in Abigail Schreier's book. Uh, the um, head of, of the education program um, in Los Angeles said to teachers, talk about transgender, talk about gender diversity, get it into every moment of the student's day. 
Uh, the last quote is from a blogger who's quoted in the Huffington Post. This was back in 2015. I would be happy, delighted, overjoyed to cause children to disagree with their families on the subject of LGBTQ people. They are coming. They're not coming. They came for our kids. They came for them. And, and they want to completely sever kids' relationships with their parents because parents are the kids' best protection. Um, the artist, by the way, that um, I've used a couple of, uh, of images for slides is the same artist that um, did the images for Aaron Brewer's book, Always Aaron. Um, so that's where these have come from. This is a gender critical artist. Our kids need help. Our kids are getting it from every single quarter. They need all kids should have the same messages from all sections of society. They should be getting the same message from their parents, from their teachers, from their pastors, from their friends' parents. And it used to be that way. You sent your kids out into the culture and they heard pretty much the same thing you believed at home. Not only has it come the opposite way, but they are getting the same message from just about everybody and it's that they could be born in the wrong body. And parents... We're the last ones saying, no, that's not true. And in many cases, unfortunately, even the churches are not backing us up on that. Uh, I think we've seen the gender unicorn, and the gender bread person. You see this on the walls in schools. You see this in the counselor's office. This is taught. This, by the way, these were created by, co by transgender college students. These, are not, these were not created by any sort of scientific person, any research. This is some transgender college students who threw this together and said, yeah, this is, this is humanity. This is how people are. Um, the NEA, the National Education Association, largest teachers union in America, they are a whole hog for this. Uh, this was their book of the month back in June. One of the middle schools in my district last year put out their summer reading list. Seven out of 30, almost 20%, 25% of the books on the list were sex and gender messaging. Um, other books you'll find in the classroom. These are in the libraries. Beyond Magenta has pornography in it. I mean, it's just gay porn. Um, I'm reading a book right now um, by David Levithan called, um, oh, I've forgotten the name of it now. Um, it's, it's hideous. It completely separates body from soul. Uh, it makes parents and teachers just like the teachers in the old Peanuts cartoons. Wah, 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 wah. They're two-dimensional flat characters that have nothing to do with the children's lives at all. And this is the message our kids are getting. This was in my district. Uh, that is a transgender activist. And Lily Eskelson Garcia, who is the president of the NEA, came to Ashland Elementary School in my district and read the I Am Jazz storybook to two classes of kindergartners with effectively no warning to parents. They sent a letter home on a Friday afternoon, long disingenuous letter with the word transgender in there once in the middle. If you have kids, you know you're not reading everything that came home in the backpack on a Friday afternoon. So they slipped this in, kids were crying. Kids went home to their parents terrified to go to the doctor because the doctor might tell them, oh, I made a mistake when I thought you were a boy. You're actually a girl. Boys going home terrified their penises are going to fall off and they might actually be a girl. This was horrific. This is a horrific thing to do to children. This is a story they read. They don't tell the truth about Jazz, that Jazz has had multiple operations to try to restore his crotch area. He basically split in half after his surgery. Um, he has he has horrible mental health issues. Um, I'm horrified for this child and what's been done to him. This is Glisson's uh, model school district policy. This is what's being forced into every school district in the nation. Virginia has adopted this. Uh, the activists in Virginia have asked the um, uh, the. Virginia Department of Education to tell them which school districts do not accept and adopt this so that they can go and apply pressure there. Here's a couple of gems from it. School staff shall not disclose anything about a student's transgender status, even to parents or guardians. Um, it is critical. Parent-guardian approval is never a prerequisite. Um, they don't tell. They don't tell parents. I threw this in. This is, goes along with um, what Father Sullen said. Um, the Glisson Model School District policy has 
three citations. That's interesting what Susan said about three. I hadn't realized that. They have three citations, two of which originated with Glisten. This is just like Big Tobacco saying, we're going to do a study to find out if nicotine's bad for you. Oh, it's not bad for you. Um, <laughs> they lied. They're lying. And two of these are self-selected surveys. This is what they're using as their research support for these policies. Um, this is from a parenting group on Facebook for parents who are dealing with transgender kids. I did not dig for these. I went to the group. I pulled up, you know, just the first four or five. This is what parents are going through. Um, I got permission to, to show you all of these. Parents are suffering. These parents are having nervous breakdowns. Their marriages are falling apart. I can't tell you how many parents their marriage have broken down because of this. And what frequently happens, a student, a child says, I've got this transgender identity. One parent affirms, one doesn't. What do you think happens? The child goes with the parent that affirms. The other parent loses custody. Um, I, I know of one friend who has had to go to re-education classes to be allowed to have male contact with her 14-year-old daughter. Wow. Blue's Clues. This devastated me. Blue's Clues did an episode where they had a drag queen and a pride parade, and they had a beaver with mastectomy scars. A beaver with mastectomy scars. Don't tell me that the writers weren't laughing at women as they were writing that. Glitter moms all over social media. Don't let your kids have social media. Somebody asked me, you know, what's the best way to restrict social media? I said, cut off the internet. Kids don't need to be there. Tell people what a glitter mom is. Thanks. Glitter moms, this is not a woman. That is a man. Uh, that is a man who dresses up as a woman. These are typically autogynophiles. They go on social media and they prey upon kids. They look for kids who are struggling in any way, any sort of struggle. They find them. They say, oh, your parents don't care about you, but I care about you. Um, they've been known to, to um, invite kids to meet up with them. Some kids have been trafficked. But they tell their kids that if your parents don't give you everything you want, they don't love you. But I do. I love you. These are men who are trying to have relationships with children behind parents' backs. Our radars, our predator radars ought to be screaming nonstop when we see this kind of thing. Uh, YouTube influencers, this is, uh, oh, I forget what, what her name is, uh, gay, queer kid stuff, queer kid stuff. She uses puppets to teach kids. The little puppets like that, those are for three and four-year-olds. That's what we do to teach three and four-year-olds stuff. Uh, these are doctors, gender doctors, cosmetic surgeons who advertise to children on social media. You can't do that on TV. Can't do that on radio. Can't do that on movies. There's no regulation on social media. They're going right to the kids and saying, hey, come talk to me. I'll cut your breasts off. Uh, the Gender Mapper works with my organization, uh, Parents uh, Partners for Ethical Care. And she has audio of calling gender clinics and asking, my child is only 13. Is that too young to have his breasts cut off? Nope, that's fine got approval for a 15-year-old boy to have his penis removed. Can't do it with uh, insurance. Insurance has certain uh, age requirements, but the parent who called in said, we can fund this ourselves. We don't need to go through insurance. Oh, sure, we can do it then. If you can pay for it, you can have anything you want. This is the gender mapper. In 2007, there was one gender clinic in the United States. Today, there are over 300. This is a billion-dollar industry. So this is my organization, Partners for Ethical Care. My book is Desisty Trans Detox, Getting Your Child Out of the Gender Cold. It's advice for parents on uh, sort of the best practices that we're seeing for what parents who are getting their kids back are doing. Um, Always Aaron is the book I mentioned earlier. It's Aaron Brewer's book. Um, I really recommend, that's a wonderful book for kids. Um, it, it really is. I want to leave you with um, my organization tries to collect stories from people who've been through this. We talked to a young woman who was trans-identified and gave it up, and she said in sixth grade, 
lots of people were telling me about trans and I, I was weirded out by it and I, I didn't want to hear anything. But in seventh grade, I couldn't avoid it anymore because people were coming up to me and saying, do you support the LGBTQ community or not? And she was a Christian and she said, you know, I don't believe that that's, that that's a good thing. And she said from that point on, everybody she talked to, that's all they wanted to talk about. They invited her to the Gender and Sexuality Allies Club, invited her to see the Harvey Milk play. That's all they would talk about. And every movement that she made away from traditional morality toward acceptance was applauded. And once she got to where she said, I wonder if I'm transgender, she said, everybody in the school is my friend. Everybody in the school. And she was autistic. It's a trope. It's just a trope. 